So let's do an example where we have to use the ideal gas law to solve a problem. In this example, we have helium gas held in a tank with a pressure of 1.72 times 10 to the fourth kilopascals. And if the pressure inside the tank is 22.8 degrees Celsius and the volume of the tank is 17 liters, determine the mass of helium in the tank. So first of all, we are going to assume that this helium is going to behave as an ideal gas. So recall that that means the molecules of helium are relatively small in size with relatively large spaces in between. They don't interact much with each other. They're mostly interacting with the walls of the container and such. And so we are told that the pressure in this tank is 1.72 times 10 to the fourth kilopascals. We are also told that the temperature is 22.8 degrees Celsius. And when we are dealing with gases, we always have to convert things to absolute temperature. So we are going to add 273.15 to that. So we see that the temperature is 295.95 kelvins. We are also told that the volume is 17.0 liters. And we are asked to find the mass of helium in the tank. So the first thing I want to just take note of is that we know how these variables kind of interact. So we know that there's a certain number of molecules of helium in our tank. They're in constant random linear motion. They're bouncing against the walls and that's what exerts our pressure. But there has to be a certain number of molecules that fit in this tank in this set of conditions. So if we were to add a bunch of molecules to the tank, Without changing anything else, we might see an increase of pressure. Or if we wanted to add molecules and maintain the pressure, we would need a higher volume in order to fit those molecules in. And if we change our temperature, for example, heating it up, then the molecules would move faster, bounce against the walls faster, which would result in a higher pressure. So just notice that these variables, they are interrelated. And we could look at it in terms of Boyle's law or Charles law or the combined gas law but none of those laws are going to get us dealing with mass and neither in fact is the ideal gas law but it does give us the number of moles so the ideal gas law is PV equals NRT and we do not have mass but we do have number of moles so by solving for the number of moles then we can convert that into mass by using the molar mass of helium so let's go ahead and do that so the pressure here is 1.72 times 10 to the 4 kilopascals. The volume is 17.0 liters. The number of moles is our unknown. And then we come to this ideal gas constant R. And I'm just going to tell you that that is 8.314. And the units are kilopascals times liters divided by moles times kelvins. And we'll have a look at that in a minute, why those units have to be that way. And the last term in our equation is the absolute temperature. So this would be 295.95 Kelvin. So just looking at our units then, um, they will all cancel out except for moles because we don't have that number. So my kilopascals on the top of this side of the equation cancels on the top of that side. Liters on the top of this side cancels liters on the top of that side. Calvin's on the top and on the bottom on the same side of our equation cancels. And so the only thing left is moles on the bottom of our fraction, which will end up giving us the number of moles later on. So this, the ideal gas constant, this 8.314, is written with these units, and the number belongs with these units. The ideal gas constant could be calculated in different units, for example, atmospheres instead of kilopascals, and it would be a slightly different number. So you do have to make sure that you're using the right units for the ideal gas law, and if, you're, if you ever forget what they are, just double check the ideal gas constant, look at the units beside it, and you've got to be using those same units so that they cancel out. All right, so let's do our calculation here. On the left side of our equation, we have 1.72 times 10 to the fourth times 17.0 liters, so that is 292,400. And since I've already canceled out my units, I'm not going to write units beside this right now. And that is equal to N times this other combination of 8.314, 
times 295.95, which gives us 2460.53. This does still have units left on it, and it's units of per mole. So mole on the bottom of our fraction here. So my last step mathematically for solving for n is going to be to divide both sides by this 2460 number. And when I do that, then as a number I'm going to get 118.836. And in terms of units, I have divided by a number that had moles on the bottom. And so if you consider this as dividing by a fraction, you know that that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So long story short, the moles that used to be on the bottom ends up on the top when we multiply. So our final units here will be moles. So let me just sketch that out over here to the side a second, what I was just saying. So 292,400, we were uh, dividing by this thing called, or this number 2460.528 per mole. And you know that dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so this is the same as 292,400 times, and then we put moles on the top, and 2460.528 on the bottom. And now you can see that in our calculator we're going to divide the numbers, but moles is our units that ends up at the top. So that does work out properly. So we've calculated how many moles of helium gas are in our tank, but we were not asked for the number of moles, we were asked for the mass. So let's just take our 118.836 moles and find out the number of grams by doing some unit cancellation here. So if we multiply by the grams per mole, then we will be able to cancel out those moles. Helium gas is 4.00 grams per mole. So we'll multiply our answer by 4, and we get 475.34. 345. So since we are at our final answer ready and we know we're going to have to report in three significant digits, I'm going to round to 475 grams of helium that should be in our tank. So that's just one example of using the ideal gas law. Of course, you can solve for any variable, P, V, N, or T. And in this case, we've also taken the extra step to convert it into the number of grams.